I went to 15 different schools, man. You know, I've said this before in interviews, but you know, it's it's relevant to the conversation. And that that change, that adaptation that I had to have, like being yeah. the new kid 15 times, you know, by ninth, tenth time, you stop trying to fit in. The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by 291 Colorado Whiskey, by Michter's, and by Heaven Hill Brands. Man, Yellow Wolf, it is so good to have you back. How you doing, brother? Excellent. How are you? Good to see you, man. Yeah. Seems just like yesterday we were at the Sunset Marquee just uh, sipping on, uh, well, you were drinking a lot of wine. You were wine. You were sipping on wine. Yeah. And then you started sipping on some Woodford. Yeah. I was drinking pretty much everything on the bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, random. You had your event at Rainbow. Yeah. Room, and uh, sometimes why uh, me and Shooter's rock band just uh, did a spot gig at the Viper Room. Yeah. So, yeah, that place is like the Death Star of cool shit. It really is, man. I never like I, I've never been around that much cool in one area. And by the way, people over there are way beautiful. And so I'm walking around sticking out like a sore thumb, sore thumb, <laughs> only guy in an ascot. Right. And then everyone else is like way hotter than me. So nah, dude, you, you at least fit in, you know. Uh, no, nah, you fit in. <laughs> <laughs> right? I fit on the other side of the street. Uh, not, the, not the cool kid, but man, it's good to see you. Yeah, good you to see you as of, well, man. You got a lot of great stuff going on. Yeah, man, we're we're busy. Uh, thank God, you know. Uh, it's been a it's been a wild couple of years. You yeah, know? and um, staying afloat. It's been. Um, it's been the it's been the it's been the good battle. Me and DJ Paul have a 2022 tattooed on us because we considered it the year of the hustler. Yeah, yeah. You've been hustling, man. I remember, you know, when we had you on last time, you were kind of like teasing, uh, you know, the the rock effort and everything. And now you just you put it out there, you and uh, you and Shooter. And sometimes why? And it's been it's been awesome. It's been doing well. But how's that? How's that? How's that felt? coming into to the rock side a little bit surprisingly um it's a, it's much harder than i anticipated it being i not to uh squatch <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's back yes, sir you know I is, think he, is he fishing for cigars i don't maybe uh he's... bring us some smoke squatch you want to smoke yeah fuck it let's do it Oh wow. Oh wow. Yo. Thank you. Squatch. Give me some son. It's been a minute. <laughs> That's what's up. Oh. There you go, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh well, hey, you're gonna have to actually walk me through this right here. Oh yeah? Yeah. The, do you the smoke? cigar price. I have from time to time, okay. but I'm still learning how to do it properly. All right. And you look the part. Well, I mean, I have I have a lot of cigars. My oh, yeah. uh, my father-in-law passed away, and oh. he and he left uh, left my Sorry wife and I off. Thank you. He was a he was a good man. He actually, you know, you'd have loved him because he uh, he loved music. You. <laughs> but uh, he left us all his cigars, and so I like a, I like a straight cut. So this is the Romeo and Julieta, uh, the the Reserva. Oh, nice. So we do a nice little straight cut right here like that. It's like, so almost like a hundred percent, you know, around. Mm -hmm. You're like, All right. not the, and just here you can like, it's a nice, uh, it's a, of course we're in the red phone booth here in, uh, in Nashville. You can feel that it's uh that humidor is perfect. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's nice and soft. There's no crunchiness to the, uh, to the tobacco leaf. You look at the, you look at here, like if you see, Kind of like if you see stick, if you see sticks or anything that looks like a stick, you know you got you don't have the best of tobacco, but you can see like how it's rolled. That's like you know perfect tobacco. But I like to smell it, you know, kind of get the palate really, you know, wet for it, really excited for it. Let me get this. Uh, you want to give it a shot? Let's snip it. Straight snip. Is that about right? Yeah, yeah that's perfect. Perfect. Nice. And and then just bring it to your lips. And then we got the we got the torch. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, that's tasty. I been I was told that you know you're supposed to light it with a uh, stick or like a piece of cedar or something. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's a lot of ways to get it lit, obviously, but um, you know, good old. I mean, that torch right there too, man. Imagine that Jeez, going against dude. something. Whew, that would hurt. That's serious. I usually, I usually, I like to use matches for uh, for lighting my cigars. Usually, mm. just because uh, I like to prove to myself that I can light a cigar with so one this match. Is, this is good. So, what level of cigar is this? Uh, so you know, this is probably going to be a pretty good match for your uh, for your whiskey. Uh, you got this eighteen year old rye whiskey, so that's like a super premium, right? Mm -hmm. So this would be this would be like that upper tier. Okay, upper tier cigars. Nice. Yeah. So we were talking about um, the transition, the rock and roll transition. Yeah, yeah man. So it's yeah, it's been a, harder than I anticipated it being. Um, I think that, you know, it took me 15 years to mm -hmm. build uh, the career thus far mm -hmm. through hip hop. And even though I was bending genres throughout that career, you know what I mean, that I had thus far, um, you know, singing hooks or blending rock and roll or blending country music or whatever and creating my own sound. It wasn't as stark as the sometimes why I transition. But, you know, Shooter and I made a record we were just so proud of that we were like, fuck it, let's just go with this rock and roll record, you know, put it out in the rock and roll genre and work it. But I think that mostly I think that there's like when you see Yellow Wolf and Shooter Jennings on a cover presents there's probably a pre preconceived right no notion about what that's going to sound like so they're they're giving it I would say it's been given less opportunity because of that yeah so it's it's been a slow crawl but you know sometimes man great projects at least in my career my best projects have taken time mm -hmm. to grow and my biggest project thus far love story uh took some time you know um people have to get acclimated to the sound is there a different inspiration for for uh tapping into rock than than hip-hop is there a different place you go for creating the music um yeah yeah i think more than anything, I think lyrically it's it's a bit less uh, selfish. You know, it's yeah. a selfless writing style for me. You know, like rock and roll lyrically, at least what I grew up listening to was a little more mysterious. Hip hop is very like literal. I'll be here at nine o'clock, you know, wearing this in this car. You know what I'm saying? I'm with this person where rock and roll can lead into some more, I guess, uh, less literal poetry. Mm. So that, I mean, that's, that's, that was the style of writing for that. And of course, singing everything, you know, like top to bottom. Like when we play live, we don't even have, like I obviously have been performing to two turntables my whole career, which is basically a backing track with, we perform this, this record with not even a click track. It's just raw band, no backing vocals, no nothing. Right. So, you know, it, all of that is a challenge, but it's fun. And we love the music, so we're stoked, which is why we decided to, you know, do this 18 year old rye in yeah. celebration of. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's sitting right here. Uh, we've got, we got a sitting right here. We got a pair, of, we need a pair of what's the, these cigars here. So, yeah, let's do the, it. The packaging is uh pretty ornate thank you look at this yeah yeah so. this uh this uh last um last thursday in san francisco you didn't you enjoy this got a um double gold and uh tasting in san francisco yeah san francisco world spirits competition yeah. uh you know uh i've been the judge of that for a long time well, we'll uh, since, see how since 2013, up. you know, but uh, the one of the things that 
that's happening right now in, in whiskey mm -hmm. is everyone's trying to have good packaging and one-up themselves. And I don't think I've seen many, there's only been one or two brands that put a snake on there. What's your connection? Are these two snakes making love? What's going on? All right, so this all this packaging, first of all, me and my homie um, Kyle Hicks, he's the creative director for Slim mm -hmm. American, uh, my clothing and apparel brand. But he's also like just an amazing like leather craftsman. He's just all around uh, ridiculous with it. So the snake is actually on the cut. It's the part of the logo for the Sometimes Why logo. Yeah. So it says Sometimes, and then there's a Y created with two snakes so we took the two snakes and repurposed them to hold together this is actually a casket so you have a cross that's mm -hmm. cut out of wood here and on the front it's got all the details of the, the bourbon mm -hmm. and um so this is holy whiskey it's coming it's got a cross holy whiskey it's holy whiskey it's been <laughs> it's sanctioned sanctioned by the lord <laughs> yeah and uh, uh it, it comes with um you know obviously a description of the whiskey and you know a message to my fans um and your fans are record. your fans are very loyal i will tell you that like uh in the last uh our last um interview together i had so many people reach out to me and say it was the best interview they'd ever seen with you and and i was like well it wasn't me it was it was wolf on the whiskey you know yeah so, I mean, well, you know, hey, man, you're you're a great interviewer, man, and that makes a huge difference. This is know. cool. This Ask is good really questions, cool. get good answers. Yeah, the um, this is a suede 5150 print um, that that holds the bottle in there, and it's also it's like a place for like you know, I mean, throw your glasses on there. Yeah, I, you know I, I, mean? I mean, this material get a pour. It's it's hard to uh, describe what that is, but that material is. You said that's suede? Yeah, red suede. Wow. Red suede. And on the front of the bottle, they're numbered 1 through 600. And uh, So there's only 600 bottles? 600 bottles that came out uh, this last uh, Thursday. Wow. And um, so on the front, it's leather bound. This is a patch that actually... Let me see. Or should we... Yeah, here we go. You got another thing in here? Mm-hmm. It's like a like a hidden compartment. Yeah, it's a like little... a like a prohibition era coffee. There you go. Yeah. So in there, this is um, sealed again with the fifty one fifty. This is a package inside of here that has a handwritten message from myself and signed. Wow. Um, I see that. Yeah. And then man, you put a lot of detail on this stuff. Yeah, man. And then a collection of Polaroids from my from my Instagram. Yeah, you changed that up. You started yeah. doing all that uh, Polaroid stuff on your Instagram. Yeah, so we put Polaroids from the Instagram, and on the back back of the Polaroids, uh, they all connect to create a puzzle. So you can get with other other people that have purchased this bottle. Oh wow! You know what I mean, and and or collect multiple bottles and and put put together the puzzle in the back this is this is dope yeah this man. is really nice like the leather is a nice touch the one last thing though is uh this is really sick so this is a a wooden cross that we that we this is the cross that came out of the top of oh, the okay. basket so we took that cross and we bound it in in red thread with a needle and you can peel this leather off of the front of the bottle and put it on a jacket or like a leather jacket or a wow. denim, denim vest or whatever. So it's a repurposed, uh, you can repurpose this as a patch with this kit. Jeez. Yeah. You put a lot of thought into this, like a, like a, <laughs> yeah. true, like a true clothing designer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's what, you know, we, you know, it deserves it, man. You know, it's, yeah. it, it's a big transition in my career and um, you know, it's a long time coming. It, you know, a lot of similarities mm -hmm. with this bottle and this packaging to my, to my own career and where I see myself and where I see, you know, the maturity of this music and, and the fans and, you know, man, it, we fans will appreciate this. You know, I would, yeah. I, I would be stoked to, to get something like this. Well, let's you know, taste from one it. Of my favorite artists. Yeah, let's, and, and you know, you know, Wolf, 
you know I love you, but if the whiskey, if I don't like the whiskey, I still got to tell you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. If I can open it. You know what? You're not going to be disappointed. There we go. No, now, remember the, the last bottling you had, you had the... Uh, you had the flip top. flip top on them. Yeah, we've we've actually changed that because we were getting some, um, you know, this is young brand shit, um, getting some condensation issues around the neck. Mm. And uh, so we're corking yep. it for better quality. So, pack. you know, it's funny, you know, packaging, you know, people want to, you want to be creative and you want to do something different, right? You want to, you want to kind of, uh, you know, change the, change it up, but sometimes... The creative doesn't work out on the yeah, on, on the exactly, production side. Exactly. So I'm just gonna put this stuff back in here. Let's taste some whiskey. Yeah, let's do it. I, I didn't see the Polaroid though. Yeah, but wait, see, is that you? Who is that? No, that's my buddy. Um, um, wait, let me I see need new is. glasses. Oh, that's Ted Russell. Ted Russell Camp. He's the bass player. He's a, an amazing artist as well, solo artist. Everyone in this band is amazing solo artist, and this is of course uh, Shooter Jennings. Yeah, that's my brother who uh, produced this album and is also in the band. So what's right about this band is that everyone that made this record in the studio mm -hmm. plays live. So you're getting the actual musicians. and Versus the uh, Versus the like a hired band for hired yeah. band. We play together, so. And you'll, you all are playing together at the Ryman. So. Yeah, we're playing, um, well the first show before the Ryman will be uh, Leonard Skinner in Michigan. Okay, all right, let's. I want to fanboy out here for a second. I've been a Leonard Skinner fan my entire life. I mean, who hasn't, right? They're just, yeah. that's amazing. That's an incredible partnership for you. What's that like to be with, with them? Oh, well, it started with, uh, what are you giggling over there about? Huh? Got the giggles. My, my boy's got the giggles over there. We got, we got a giggle. He, he's, he's stoned. Well. It's, it's Squatch. <laughs> Squatch is over there stoned. Yeah. Yeah. He's been hanging out in that humidor. He's getting Don't high. Quick giggling, squash. Cheers, man. Cheers. All right, eighteen-year-old rye whiskey. It says straight. So it says straight rye whiskey on it. So what? One of the things, like if it's not, it doesn't say straight. There could be some shenanigans in there. You can you can add additives. Man. All right, it's just. Uh, <laughs> this is really. If you don't like this, you're insane. You're like, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> smells good. It smells like. Um, you're right. It smells it like sugar. Well, though. It smells like sugar cane. Like yeah, it's actual a, I, sugar I'm, cane. Oh damn. Yeah, you give me your your palate on it, and I'll 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 tell you what I what I taste. Well, first of all, it's incredibly sweet for a rye. Ryes tend to be really spicy, but this is this is delivering um, like a vanilla cake batter, followed by like some uh, black pepper spice for me. But there is um, there's like a hint of rosemary in here that I. I love rosemary, so I just like get a little bit of that. It's really nice. This is damn good. Totally. There's only 600 bottles? Only 600. Are you buying them all for yourself or? Here, cheers. Cheers. I'm I mean, glad you like it. It's good. I like. What's the price point on Listen, it? Listen, I. Um... This is four to four fifty retail, I think, and which I think is a great deal, especially with this packaging. All the, that's all not, the, I mean, that is, um, you know, for for an eighteen year rye, that's not a, that's not over the top. I mean, would I like it personally to be fifty nine dollars so I could go in and buy it uh, every Tuesday? Of course, but those days don't exist anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. But this is um this is really tasty. I drink a you know, I've been really fortunate, like end up in situations where I get to taste really like exclusive whiskeys and yeah. bourbons and all that. So I've had quite a bit of King Louis and I've had quite a bit of Pappy. I had like a thousand dollar pour 
a one one ounce thousand dollar pour of Pappy in Bentonville with my buddy Stuart. And man, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is in the house of of some of those it's good. Some of those pours. You should be very proud of that. Yeah, man. It's 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 nice and spicy, sweet, smooth going down. There's like I I have like a bit of leather and like apple is kind of what I taste. Um but overall, man, it's just, you know, man, eight is imagine you know, something that sits and ages for eighteen years. It's, it's old like, enough to vote. The you know is old enough to vote. <laughs> it just blows my mind, you know, that that there might have been a man in in the distil in the distillery or that didn't leave, live to see this yeah. get make it to a bottle, you know, yeah. like some seventy year old man, eighty year old man, or you know, in there rolling yeah. barrels and didn't get to see it and make it to a glass. I guarantee it, he would have drank out of it though. Yeah. Those uh, those old timers. They take straws mm. into the into the warehouse, and they'll siphon a little bit out <laughs> of the barrel. Yeah. So when you get a low barrel, those new timers do it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this is great. This is a great pairing. Thank you. Yeah. So the Leonard Skinner story, man. You you want to know how that happened? I'd love right. to. So Peter Keys, who plays with uh, Leonard Skinner. He played for Funkadelic for years too. I mean, he's yeah. a legend. He played Maggot Brain live, you know, and then he went from that to Skinner. He's just a legend. Well, we became good friends and started working together here in Nashville. Basically, as my in-house keyboard piano guy, and uh, he actually um, he helped vocal coach me through Sometimes Why. It was just me, Peter, and my engineer mm. when we did the vocals for this record. And also, Ricky Medlock, um, whom I met out on the, uh, well, I met his wife on the Kid Rock cruise. Mm -hmm. And then that came full circle. Ricky Medlock plays with Skinner, and so did Peter. And they were doing a rehearsal here in Nashville. And I knew they had a rehearsal on a Saturday morning, but I knew they were leaving, like, that afternoon. And so I got up at, like, six in the morning hungover and i hit up peter and i was like hey man uh can i slide by your rehearsal and say hey and i it's, it's probably the most american thing i've ever done in my life is pull up at 7 a.m on a saturday morning and walk into a skinner rehearsal and i literally there's a couch in the rehearsal space and it's just me the engineer and the full band and i walk in on Sweet Home Alabama. Wow. You know, and I sat down, I'm just like, yeah, I've never seen them live, you know? Yeah. And, you know, it's just like, Leonard Skinner, when you're from Alabama, is like a birthright. Right. You know, you're just like, here's Leonard Skinner as well. As did, you have a, did you have a desire to scream free bird while you <laughs> I were- I didn't have to. They, I, I knew they were gonna play it, you know? I got to, I, all the classics, man. Um, I just sat there and just soaked it up. Wow. And uh, so, you know, um, I, I was kind of hoping that Peter would say, hey, man, you know, Wolf and Shooter have a, this rock band, you know. And um, but I didn't want to be like, hey, is there a way that we could possibly play? you?" I didn't ask any of that. But sure enough, Peter was like, Ricky. You know, Shooter and Wolf did this rock and roll album, and then Van Zant walked over and was like, "He's like, no way, they did rock and roll. You guys should come open up." It was like that. Wow. But the Shooter, I already had a relationship with them. I, I I've had this musical relationship with um, Peter for a long time. Uh, Ricky Medlock and I have, you know, have had aspirations to do um, uh, Train Train. Mm -hmm. We we were trying to find time to redo Train Train. We've been trying to do that for the past couple of years. So there was this like just, you know, kindred spirit, you know, that, that, thank God Shooter had, had already had history with playing with them and it just happened. Um, you know, when those guys say we're good to go, you know, you don't have to deal with agents anymore. It's like, 
No, they say we're good. We're playing. That's awesome. <laughs> so, That's awesome. You know, so hopefully it'll turn into some more shows, but, you know, well, just to I, play one at all is just like a dream. But, but I will say, too, like, this is also, this is a testament to your work ethic, you know? I mean, you are a hustler, and there's a lot of things you could have been doing when you went to go sit on that couch, but you went there. Maybe, you know, you're definitely a music fan, but you went there, made that connection, and something else, a lot of people don't know this about you. Um, you will buy your own billboards. You will, you will invest your own money in your shows versus like, you know, a lot of artists won't do that because you are, you you believe in in your team, your talent, but you you hustle, you push, you don't just sit and wait for something to come to you. And I think that's I think that's a, a big reason why. You know, Leonard Skinner's happening, or the Ryman's happening, why right? you got an 18 year whiskey, or you got a rock, you know, album out. I think you just, you, you just naturally, these things come to you because you're working your ass off like all the time. Yeah. yeah. I, I really, I guess I can, I can give a lot of credit uh, to my mom for that, you know, because we just never stopped moving. You know, she's like self proclaimed gypsy, you know. I went to 15 different schools, man. You know, I've said this before in interviews, but you know, it's it's relevant to the conversation. And that that change, that adaptation that I had to have, like being yeah. the new kid 15 times, you know, by ninth, tenth time, you stop trying to fit in. It's just like I'm over changing my clothes, I'm over changing my accent, I'm over changing this, and you start figuring out how to find your people. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then there was a wealth of culture that came through my house and music culture. My mother was in the, you know, married into the music business for, you know, she was married to Randy Travis, a stage manager for eight years, man. And then prior to that, um, she was with uh, uh, Ted Nugent and Aerosmith's uh, light and sound guy for seven years. So there was constant music going through my house. You know yeah. What I'm Did the phone ever ring there? You want to get that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Nah, man. But um, yeah, it's you know it it is a lifestyle, and it's um, I I don't feel comfortable sitting still, to be honest. You know, yeah. Even when I go on vacation, you know, it's like a week or so, and I'm like tapping my heel, like man, this I don't I don't feel safe sitting still you know mm. i think it's just that fear of like a healthy fear of being poor you know you once you like have experienced food stamps and no heat in the house and boiling water to have a hot bath for your kids and shit like that man it's just like it's horrible it's horrible you know and, and i tell people all the time like you, there's a there's a bit of misconception about slum american mm -hmm. you know about like it's the bottom, it's the gutter, it's the, it's not the bottom, it's coming from the bottom and making something of that, you know, that is the American idea and the culture of who we are, like be a tattooed CEO, you know what I mean? And represent it proudly, to be proud of where you're from and do something with it, you know, make, make magic out of a bad situation. And, uh, you know, and that's, and things come to fruition, man, I mean, I mean, this is incredible, Yeah. you know, um, ideas, they, they start to manifest. And the more that the more you manifest, it seems to be easier as you get older. Just get to that one first major goal that you have and you'll find things start to, you know, magnetize themselves toward that goal. You know, mine was to break out as an artist, you know, after Yellow Wolf started to happen, we popped the trunk. Well, then I started feeding that into other things, Slamerican, whiskey, you mm -hmm. know, clothing and apparel, whatever, whatever it was. You know? How many companies do you own or have a piece of right now? Um, Creekwater, Slamerican clothing and apparel, Gold Tooth Screen Printing, merch, merch company. Um, uh, Slamerican, um, record label. Mm -hmm. I've I, I've 
I've signed an artist named Tony Martinez. I just got him a, a situation, uh, produced a produced a country western record on him. Um, I have a full full time residency as a producer at House of Blues here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and I I think that's it. I mean, other than um, you know my own music, obviously, and yeah. merch. But it's a, it's around four companies all together. If we well a fifth if we included um, film production. We produced a movie in in Mexico a couple years back called Mudmouth that will be coming out in the next couple years. It's, I did hand hand drawn animation for it. Is why it's taking so long for people that keep asking. I put like a quarter million dollars in hand drawn animation. Oh. for the movie so it's like very like very like pink floyd ish yeah you know uh, oh, that's awesome and uh also we started a non-profit this year called slum saving lives using music and um my manager has done phenomenal with that he's like met with the governor about it you know we've he's connected a lot of dots with that and it's basically a non-profit for kids troubled youth to come Earn time. Well, the first first thing we were trying to do is by doing community service, you can earn hours in the studio. Yeah. So instead of going to juvenile and getting locked up, you can go put put in hours cleaning up the streets or helping someone who needs help or wow. rebuilding someone's house. You know, uh, painting someone's house. You know, whatever. Yeah. And. By doing that, you will earn hours in a in a studio and get to come hang out with, possibly you know me or another yeah. artist. Like we bring a guest artist in, you can have a session with let's say like Gucci Mane or or Shooter Jennings or something like that. Wow! You know? So that's the non nonprofit we've started. That's amazing. Thanks, man. I, well, well I, that, that I give all credit to my manager Edward Crow, man. He really went in. And, He's, uh, uh, you know, we were talking about him earlier. Looked like he'd been working out last time I saw him. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I keep him working out, though. I keep him working out. Like, I, I don't know how. Well, first of all, it's, it's one of my best friends in the world. I've known him since I was 13 years old. Started writing graffiti together. That's how we met, <laughs> you know. And uh, so we understand what who we're helping because we want to see these kids Right. Hopefully find the path we found, you know, get legit. It's okay to be legit, man. There's nothing wrong with being legit. And a lot of kids run from that. They think that they can't obtain it, but you can, you know what I'm saying? And walk around with no worries, man. Well, I mean, you go back to that time in your life, anybody 13 to 15 years old, I don't care who you are, whether you got the perfect upbringing, everybody has that one moment where they either take a left or a right. And sometimes you take the wrong turn. And mm -hmm. to have to have an organization there that's there to support them, because once you get in the system, you're fucked. You know, it's hard to get out of that yeah. system. And it has no, you know, the system is blind to you know to a certain extent. You know, it you know it doesn't pick and choose rich to poor, right? You know, because I've I've met kids from, you know you know, Beverly Hills that are in real, real bad shape, you know, way worse than I had it, you know, mom's crack addict, dad is out of his mind, you know, it, so it, it, and then there's some kids that, you know, may grow up in a trailer park with a level head on their shoulders. Yeah. So it doesn't, you know, that it, it doesn't pick and choose based on, you know, where you are financially where your family is financially it's really a, a mental spiritual issue so you gotta you know so we're just aiming to just kind of help to crack that code in our own way you know speak to our fans so I'm, I'm i'm very clear that a, a bulk of my young fans have you know are troubled yeah you know that's why they're attracted to my music because i speak to them about that mm -hmm. so i i feel you know honored and also uh, responsible to give something back. Well, uh, I will say that, you know, the, the whiskey world loves helping. So anytime you want to, you want to tap into some of the, uh, 
um, the things that we do in the whiskey world. Although it can it might send the wrong message to the to the cops when they see that we're supporting it with a with whiskey because they tend to think we're all a bunch of drunks. But the, uh, please, uh, police drink. Well, I, don't, I mean, I mean that <laughs> not not necessarily cops per se, but that uh, the people who are trying to rehabilitate troubled youth may see like, oh well, we got ourselves a whiskey company over here helping uh, helping the troubled youth. That, don't make <laughs> that no goes sense. really well with you. <laughs> <laughs> you can just stay yeah. in that character. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I meant to say like, if I wasn't wearing ascots, I'd be a bolo tie man. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's a that's a sweet bolo tie. I appreciate it. I love bolo ties, man. Yeah, and you know, like, and I I respect. I listened to one of your um, uh, your podcasts, and I, you know, just to hit on that particular part of it, um, th- that the whiskey industry cares uh, because we do, uh, and it was a story about someone who killed a family of five in a yeah. drunk driving accident, and uh, you know, just once and for all, dude, like. There's no excuse for that anymore. Right. Zero. Yeah. Walk, worst case scenario, walk. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, you know, Uber, Lyft. Yeah. And, you know, people genuinely will help. Just say, dude, I can't drive. Yeah. Somebody get me home. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? Just don't jump behind the wheel. That shit's terrifying. You know, I, I love to have a good time and drink. You know, but it even scares the hell out of me. You know, I got kids on the road now, you yeah. know, and God forbid, you know, it just so we do care. And I mean, you know, you know, we party safely, man. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You, know, you just got to learn how to handle yourself or don't do it at all. You got to know the limits. You know, drinking responsibly it kind of came out as a protection measure against like people trying to you know, bring back another uh, prohibition. Um, but it's really an edict that you should live by. And for more reasons than just, you know, mm. public safety, like your own your own health, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, when Creek Water first came out, man, we, we noticed that like, okay, we would do these bottle signings and go to the bar and kids would just shooting Creek Water, you know, five shots. It's a hundred proof, man. Yeah. Your lights out after five, six shots, you're done. You know, it's like, it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got to, ha- like, and I want, I want kids to know, man, like, sip and enjoy your drink, man. Yeah. You don't have to do shots, dude. You can chill and, and have a good time and chill and, and enjoy, enjoy it slowly. Take your time and you'll actually find you'll get a better buzz doing it that way. It's, it's more mellow. It's like you're in control. You know, you, you can have a decent conversation. And, you know, uh, but yet, yeah, you know, for the Creek Water fans, you know, like, have fun. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with pouring a glass. Throw some ice in your glass. You know what I mean? Break it down if you want to. I, I, I drink uh, Creek Water with ice all the time. Uh, I wouldn't back, do it with this. Sh- I, I recommend that people get this 18 year old and drink along with us while while watching the show sitting sip it along with us there's probably quite a bit that already are yeah since <laughs> this, that'd be so cool since this went on sale five days ago mm. there's only 600 bottles man i'm wondering oh yeah by the way fred this is unmarked i'm gonna i'm gonna write on this and i'm gonna i'm gonna gift you with this this bottle this is for you bro oh thanks man yeah man we were so found one that hadn't been numbered yet. This is uh, the whiskey's great. You've got a rock album out. Um, you know, you've got um, Leonard Skinner. You got the Ryman. Yeah, the Ryman. You know, uh, let's go. Ryman is like that's like that's like a church for musicians, right? You yeah. you you play there. That's like the uh, the music community like sanctifying you. You <laughs> yeah. know, like. Harmony, <laughs> you know. I mean, what's what's that like? Did you ever imagine yourself in the Ryman? No, no, you know. And uh, you know, sometimes I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I did. I visualized that. I really wanted that to happen. I would be honest. And no, I did not. I didn't. I never saw us playing there. 
because I can't imagine my fans sitting down for anything. I've never been to a sit down. My, I've never had a headlining sit down show. So I was like, hopefully they'll bring us back. <laughs> I don't know how my fans are going to act in the Ryman, <laughs> but... You're going to get a bill after it. Uh, <laughs> we had so many broken uh, chairs. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no. I, I don't... I'm sure that they'll behave. I mean, I'm I'm telling people like, listen, this is like <laughs> you, you didn't say that very confidently. I'm sure they'll behave. <laughs> Look, I'm dressing up. I'm wearing a suit. You know, I'm, wear, I'm like straight up wearing a suit. My band's gonna wear a suit. You know, my wife's gonna be obviously dressed to the nines. You know, my mom. Will we're, the puppies taking, be? Will the puppies the be there? Seriously. Will the puppies huh? be there? Puppies will not. Cry baby. Trailer party. <laughs> Bambi and Pepper. They'll be at home. <laughs> Trailer party, dude. What a good dog name, right? That's a great dog name. Yeah, but never name your dog Crybaby because they whine all day. <laughs> <laughs> they become their names, man. I'm telling you. But so you bring you bring in the whole family, and you know uh, what a tribute to them, but to get to see you in in that moment, you know. Yeah, we're we're excited, man. Looking forward to it. You know, just really, you know, becoming a part of that musical history and mm -hmm. to say that, man, we did it. We did it. It's awesome. Yeah. Cheers to that, brother. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers to, to that. The, Cheers to the Ryman show, man. And Skinnerd, baby. Mm. Mm. But with all the celebration of rock and roll. You know, I've been asked a lot, are you going to do hip-hop again? you going to do hip-hop again? And I never said no. I was just like, well, you know, I'm just focused on this right now, you know? It's difficult. You know? It's sometimes difficult for people to hear that. Like, you know, they don't want to... Ex people get put in boxes. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's less so in music today than it was when uh, Garth Brooks tried to do his... Uh, R&B record? Yeah, his whole thing. <laughs> What was his name? Chris. Uh, Gain, no, Chris. No, Chris. No. Chris Gant. Chris Gaines. Gaines. Yeah. Chris, Chris Gaines. Gaines. Toe ring. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he it, had a toe ring barefooted. It, it, and he was on like, the cover. He had this, you know, everybody's was like, I'm not Garth Brooks. I'm Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines. You, it was like the boys to men style stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. He well, I mean, that's, a, that that's a pretty gnarly flipped I, I i i don't know if i can compare what i've done with sometimes why to that <laughs> but um <laughs> but it but people like in the in the music space you know they want to put you in a box and you can't put you in a box you know so well i think i've done that you know the casual listener like there, there might be one kid that heard pop the trunk one time as their favorite record but they didn't follow i see you 10 years later and you're doing this like oh you changed it's like well, there's a, there, a story led up to this time. You know what I mean? There's a lot that happened yeah. between Pop the Trunk and this record, you know? Yeah. And I think I left breadcrumbs along my career. I sang a lot of records and blended enough sounds to make this not such a shock. But, uh, you know, as far as hip hop goes, I mean, to be honest, I, I'll i always love hip hop. And mm -hmm. I'll always love the art form of, of emceeing and writing uh, hip hop records. Matter of fact, we're going to New Zealand and uh, October, late October, I'm taking uh, Kasky, Doobie, uh, my young homie Fasa, um, and DJ Paul, and we're going to do a uh, hip hop tour in New Zealand in, uh, in October. Just That's awesome. Out of nowhere, so. I love that. Yeah, you know, it's still fun, man. Music is fun, you know, it's kind of like, that's why you can't say, you never say never, because you never know, like, next year I'm, I'm sitting around, I'm like, man, you know, I think I'm going to go do a record with Malay, and let's see what happens with that, you know? Um, you know, watch, it's going to happen. I can too. see it. It's going to happen. Put, you put it out there, good things happen to those who come on this show. Uh, people, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, Charles Woodson comes on, gets in the NFL Hall of Fame, Peyton, you know, not that they weren't going to get on anyway. People come on and get nominated for Grammys. I'm just saying, you know, okay. a little bit of the. Let's go. Let's get this going here. Let's get it going. We have, we've uh, we've uh, I think we've submitted uh, sometimes why. Uh, well, I've been told it's been submitted to the Grammys, so we'll we'll see. What's the process for that? And it's kind of, 
it's I guess to be told not sold kind of deal because I don't I don't know if anyone really knows the ins and outs of of how it's done what the process mm-hmm. is how they pick the records how you get a record in um I believe that it's probably a lot of you know who you know in the world and and who can actually hand your record to the right person and yeah. get some attention on it and well hey it's I, mean, a, I don't know it's a great record it, it it pieces a lot of elements of music together and i i like that i like that kind of uh uh the way the way it moves i like the way you sound in it and thank you i'm no music critic i'm just a whiskey critic but uh i i thought it was great now one thing i wanted to touch on now it's going to sound weird to a lot of people what I'm about mm. to ask you. This is so good. It is so good. Go it, it is very good. And I'm about to ask you a very awkward question. All right, what? Your skin's very good. <laughs> what's, what, what's your skin <laughs> regimen? What's your skin regimen? My I, skin, I'm curious because- My skin you know, care regimen? What's your skin care regimen? die laughing at you right now, bro. <laughs> she tries to get my skin care regimen includes heavy tattooing, <laughs> way too much time in the sun, <laughs> I, I, you know, like all my bullshits hid with a fucking redneck tan right now. It mean, kind of ends about right there, as you can see. This is a this is a golf tan. I've been golfing lately. Oh, I love it. But uh, we'll get to that too. But no, like, dude, my wife got me all this stuff, and I, you know, sunscreen. It's about as far as I take it. You know what I mean? But I appreciate it, man. It's, I, you know, but every every one in my family. On my mother's side, you know, in their 60s and 70s are like Willie Nelson. Like, it's like fully. So I, I think I'll, I'll be there one day. I'll, I'll be fully wrinkled up and gray and God willing, that, you know. Oh, well, the whiskey might help you. <laughs> it'll help me get there quicker? No, no, it'll help you. It'll, <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll get you, you know, exfoliate, moisturized exfoliate inside. with it. I don't know where I'm going with this shit. Um, no, nah, thanks, man. No, nah, I just like, um, I yeah, I really hide a lot of shit with tattoos, honestly. I got a lot of scars and so shit. So that's, that's the trick to good skincare. More tattoos. Yeah, just cover it. And that's it. You know, when man, in doubt, tattoo over it. I love it. Well, that's the uh, that's the lesson here on today's show. I'm going to pour a little more whiskey. Mm-hmm. All right with that? Hey, speaking of great things that happen on this show, thank you for introducing me to uh, Chuck Morton. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cheers for that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. I'm glad that conversation's going somewhere. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yes, sir. Cheers. Cheers. Fred. Mm, well, Wolf, great having you on, man. Yeah, man. It's good to have you great out here in Nashville. Out. Yeah, man. You should do an event here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got, we got a couple in the works. A little blind bourbon thing, you know. Count me in, bro. I'll uh-huh. be here. You want to you want to come on the stage and wear a blindfold and have me put things under your nose? Yeah, sure. Okay. See how terrible <laughs> I am at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so tell us what what's so we know about all what's going on here. Yeah. What's what's next? What's new? I mean, all right. country album. What what do we got going on next? All right. Yeah. You know. Well, I'm Dewey Cox now. Just do <laughs> just do everything. <laughs> uh, walk hard. Um, no, I, I, uh, I'm pretty, pretty focused on this record right now. I've, the newest thing for me is my, my residency at the House of Blues. I got yeah. my room back as a full-time producer. And so, you know, I, I can't really make enough. I can't fulfill all the music that I can actually make myself, you know? So I thought, like, I'm just starting to forward that over to new artists you know yeah like making because i mean if it was if, if i really put my head down and got focused you know i could drop an album every month you know and uh but i don't know i don't i think it, that's a bit greedy i'd like to like share some of that music and some of those ideas and help other artists yeah. come up you know you seem to be in this like wanting to give back stage yeah i think yeah i'm just growing up man you know yeah things become uh, things you thought were valuable to you at, at one point just they just start to become less valuable to you you know yeah and you you get more gratification out of 
seeing someone happy or seeing someone else succeed with your help is such a feeling. You know what I mean? And, you know, it, it becomes addictive. It's addictive to help people, man. It really is. Yeah. So, you know, see how long it lasts. <laughs> Five years from now, I'm like, fuck them. <laughs> Well, they did me wrong now. If they don't follow the path that maybe you have in mind for them, I mean, that can be a hard pill to swallow for someone that... I mean, that's a good point. You know? You, that's, another, that's another part of growing up as well, is learning to let go of that. Yeah. Stop seeking some sort of payback. Right. When you give something to someone, let it go. You know? Not, they don't owe you for that. You know? You help them out if they wish to show you love in return. Fine. If not, you still did good. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, man. This has been a good conversation. It's always a great conversation. Whether there's a camera or not, man, I always enjoy hanging out. Of course. My dog. Mm. Sometimes why? Double gold. By the way, what is the double gold? What is the why? Is the why yellow wolf? What is the why in the sometimes why? Oh, thanks for asking. It's a, uh, because I thought more people would ask that it's not like a, common question i was like well i guess maybe they know you know but uh so sometimes why is like uh you know you learn in school it's like and sometimes why you know so oh sometimes, like the i like the use of god A-E-I-O-U or... and sometimes why you yeah. know like like but why they never tell you why you use... they never tell you why why right so it's ba- it basically stands for you know, question everything and, you know, and, and why not? You don't have, I don't have to explain why I did a rock and roll album. You know, it just is what it is. Well, that's good. That's insightful. I'm surprised more people haven't, that was the first question I was going to ask you. And then I got off of my weird, in my weird head about the skincare thing. And then just, it all went, <laughs> it all derailed from there. <laughs> it, you know, it, 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 it also like, uh, you know, it, it leaves a lot of creative freedom to this band, you know. Yeah. The album itself is very, like, we hit a lot of different styles within the album. You did. Like, we felt like, man, let's just try to make our favorite rock song every time. Our favorite classic, you know. And um, that's what we're going to continue to do. And, and who and knows what happens in between then. Maybe cover Freebird. Who knows? Hey, <laughs> let's go, Michigan! <laughs> Well, cheers, brother. Cheers.